All right, we have our Hollyland Mars 300 Pro transmitter set up on the Canon C100. Sending to the receiver and the receiver to the Ninja V. And uh, then I gotta go get into the wagon. So we're ready to get our shoot today. So we got Steve here. He's gonna be riding this. I'm gonna be in that wagon on the back. <laughs> so uh, yeehaw. All right, I've got lots of components to this tutorial, so uh, let's get to it. I was contacted by the wonderful folks at Hollyland about the update for the Mars 300. This is the uh, 300 Pro, and I have the enhanced version, which has the antennas on the outside of the transmitter. The standard has them built in. Now, I took this out on location, and I'll show you those results in just a second, but let's have a look at the hardware itself and see what comes in the box. So, nicely packed in this box are the systems. Now, I already put um, this mount on here, which I'll talk about in a second. So, really great build quality, solid, very, very light. That's what you want. This is the transmitter, and this is the receiver. They um, have options for a battery, or you can also power them by a USB brick. There's a USB-C uh, plug in the side that you'll also use to update the firmware, but you can also use a brick. So there's the mount for the bottom. You only get one of these mounts, and with that, we're going to put a cold shoe on this, and the combination of these two is going to allow us to put us put it on our DSLR. And of course, it's got a quarter 20, so you could mount this thing anywhere, but I'm gonna stick it on my uh, DSLR. Down at the bottom, there's a quarter 20, same thing. There's a lot of uh, ventilation holes on, on all sides so that they get a lot of ventilation. And a really smart uh, update to the Mars is, let me just uh, focus in on that is there's a dual HDMI. So both the transmitter and the receiver have dual HDMI. And of course there you see the USB-C ports. So what do you need a second U uh, HDMI port for? For monitoring, especially if you have the transmitter on your camera and the camera also has a separate uh, display that's HDMI. Well, how do you send to to the transmitter from your camera and to your external display through the HDMI out? So it loops out. So you're watching on an external monitor and you're sending it. Same with the receiver. You could be sending out to two different displays. Maybe you got an electronic viewfinder and a display in a video village kind of uh, uh, thing. Okay, and uh, the tops. Uh, so the receiver, no antennas, but the uh, transmitter does have an antenna. And uh, in the box, it comes with a big, fat, hearty USB-C cable. And you got to love the fact that you get three antennas. Now, you wouldn't use all three, but you would definitely have one as a replacement. So they just go on to the top. They thread on very nicely. Again, the build quality of this is really, really good. So you need to position these the correct way. And they have these little notches in them so that you can, and they lock boom, boom, both ways. So after you have um, tightened this up, then you will set those up like this. So in a vertical situation, you have it like this but we're going to mount this on the DSLR. So we need to turn these up like, and sometimes you've got to twirl these all the way around and then get it like that. So boom, boom, all the way up. So now on the DSLR, this is the setting and the, the uh, battery just fits right into the top, really snug. Nice, good snap. It's got a battery release right there. Uh, you, you don't need that big of a battery, but uh, you could definitely uh, use one. And you'll see on the side when I turn this on that if it gets below uh, 6.8 volts, that's when you need to replace the battery. Um, okay, so 
that's all we need the box for. And the receiver I'm going to plug into my Ninja V um, and that will give us a live feed of what's going on. So let me just turn that on. And silly me, I forgot USB cable. So just like the transmitter, I'm going to stick this on the receiver. And we'll go to HDMI out. Doesn't matter which one, but I'll go HDMI out one. And then I'll plug this in to the Ninja. Okay. So right away, we can see that we, even before I turn this on, uh, the Holy Land um, logo is showing up there. And let's turn both of these on. Uh, right on the side is a little power button. And then there's this great little thumb wheel. What Hollyland has, has uh, done really well is they've combined a bunch of controls into one. So this little dial has a little, uh, see, let me see if you can see it. You can see that little nib there. So you're pushing the nib up and down and it snaps back into the middle. So uh, all of the controls are right here. So let me turn on the Okay, so I guess my receiver was already on. So we're connecting, and you can see it automatically set um, its the channel. Probably the best part of all of this, other than the fact that the quality is fantastic and it's reliable, is that when I got this out of the box, I plugged the two batteries in, I turned both of them on, they instantly connected. I've never had to scan, but you can, if you hold the, the uh, middle wheel down for a quick second, then you'll get to the settings. For instance, you could reset the password, the Wi-Fi password. You can pair it. You can turn the fan control. So you've got options of, of changing the fan. There's the version and you have scene modes that you can use. So there are things you can set up right out of the box. I leave it alone. Okay, so now let's get this going on my DSLR. All right, so the little cold shoe fits into the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that I'm nice and tight on there. Great. And then I'll face that under here facing forward and I'll take my HDMI out and plug that into the HDMI in and I'll turn on my 5D and we should get it. There we go. So just like that, we are connected. So um, rather than leave this on something boring, I have some art grid stock video playing in a loop over on my other computer and I've got a stand over there. So let me put this on there and then I'll be right back. Okay. And you can see we get a live feed of whatever I'm doing. So remember, I'm, I'm taking a shot of the actual display over there. So the quality is based on you're shooting a display. So the, the final footage looks much, much better. And that's really as simple as it is, the fact that you can just plug that in and it's going to auto scan and automatically show you everything that's on it. And if you run the Holly View app, then you can also view the same um, output, the same transmission on a smartphone. And there we are connected. 
So you see the same display. And the app actually has some extra features like a waveform monitor, a histogram. It has a focus, zebras, uh, frames. You can magnify different sections. There's false colors, multicolor, and even a LUT. So you could load in your own LUT on there. So really great for extra people. The director's looking at this one, maybe script supervisor, continuity, visual effects person's got their phone out and everybody's looking at this and everyone can see it at the same time. 400 foot transmission range to the receiver, 300 to the smartphone, 0 0.1 second latency. Latency is the difference from when something happens in real time and you see it. And 0 0.1 seconds is so small, you're not even gonna see that. Of course, real time monitoring app, the HDMI uh, in and loop out, thumb wheel switch menu, OLED, the side display, fantastic. So let me set this up for you. Um, I thought the best thing to do to capture this on location was to get the kind of shot where the director can't see it in a moving vehicle. It's not safe for the director to be there and they just, what are they gonna do? Run alongside the vehicle? So my wife is playing the part of the director. She's hidden around the other side of the barn. My buddy Steve is dr driving the uh, ATV, the quad, and I'm in the back in a wagon. So let's have a look at that. The top is the main camera, that's my C100. The bottom is a zoomed hey, in shot of Roger that. the Ninja V on location. And you can see above that is yeah, the bye. Mars 300 Pro receiver. Action. So the director is on the other side of that barn. So way over there, out of sight. And you're looking at that transmission live as it's being recorded. I'm not recording, I am recording this on the camera, not on the remote viewer. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hide and make it look like we just have a, a rear view of him driving. And then I go into the scene. Now watch what happens. You'll see my main camera goes black, but the other display still shows up. And the reason the top one went black was I stopped recording but the other two still have the, the main feed on it. So I was a little bit confused when I was lining all of these up on the timeline. I wondered, why does this go to black when it shouldn't? It should, um, it should continue on. But of course, starting and stopping the camera doesn't stop the transmission of video data to the receiver. Actually, I think that's a really good thing because someone's watching, they might be missing something that the camera operator didn't see when they're turning things on and off. So that's a really good idea. Now, I wanna show you the distance. This is our little uh, video village. There's the Mars 300 Pro receiver. And look, all the way over to the other side, I had Steve go back over to the fir first position. He's way over there. That's how far we were transmitting from. And honestly, I wasn't sure. Um, we actually had a, a, a different location in mind, which was these blue, you'll, you'll see in the final shot, the, these, um, uh, these blue things that were sitting there. And that's where we started, but we didn't get a good enough run. So I went all the way back to, to that one. So let's have a look at the final. What I did was I, we, we removed the trailer because the shot isn't me on the trailer, the shot is him. He he rides in, goes around the corner and goes towards the barn. So I, after we removed the trailer, then I just did a handheld shot of him driving along. So let's have a look at the completed shot. So there you go. I, I think that uh, that shows you how you can really use this and the fact that, you know, here I am, I'm 
it's been playing the whole time uh, from my uh, the, the playback on the other side. It's just rock solid. Uh, it's light. It's a great simple unit. Not a lot of fuss. Simply plug it in and it works every single time. You've got that loop out. And you can um, power it by USB. It really is a smart solution all in one. Um, so there's links in the description with more information uh, about the uh, Mars 300 Pro Standard and the Enhanced. I might update those um, if they've got some deal that, that I can make available. So that link that's in there might be different later than it is now. So make sure you check it out. Um, I'm really happy that they reached out to me. I, I'm very happy with the Holy Land quality. I think they're um, at a great price point, but without compromises, really good build quality and standards, I mean, sturdy, solid solution. You just turn it on and it works.